Hey, what's going on everyone? Joey here and right now I'm gonna go ahead and give you my best guesses on who's remaining on The Mask Singer. There are seven left and so far between last season and this season, I've gotten them all right with the exception of one because why, Dr. Drew? Who would have thought Dr. Drew? Anyway, before we get started, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell and give this video a thumbs up. Let's get started. Now, if you're new to the YouTube channel, hi, how are you? My name is Joey Contino. I'm an executive audio producer here in New York City, where it's my job every single night to gather audio for my clients. And when that audio does not sound good, it's my job to go ahead and either clean it up by pitch correcting it, maybe, but maybe taking out some high frequency, maybe taking out a low frequency. And so, as you know, every single week, The Mask Singer gives us these clue videos. And in those clue videos, the celebrities are talking to us, giving us these clues, and well, you don't understand them. Why? Because Fox said, huh, if we let them hear their real voice, they're gonna know who the celebrity is. So they pitch up the voice and they speed it up so that you have no idea. And so every single week we've been doing all the pitch correct audio along with the clues. And we, we have gone already and revealed all the seven contestants already on this show. So right now I'm just gonna do like a little recap on who I think is left on the show and then kind of give you a few of the clues and why I think they are who they are. And you can comment below if you agree or disagree. And then at the very end, we'll go ahead and play the pitch correct audio. Of course, ignore the leopard because we found out that this person is talking higher up with a British accent. I can't do a British accent. I know, my cat's freaking out at me. Anyway, let's get started. We're gonna get started with the butterfly. Now, we already revealed the butterfly as Michelle Williams. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and say a lot of you guys aren't going to agree with me, so let's go through some of the clues real quick. To start things off, she did say, say my name, which is a big hint to Destiny's Child. Say my name, say my name. Yeah, not that good as them, but it's, it's there. She goes on to talk a lot about depression and being alone, because alone was behind her. And back in 2018, well actually December of 2018, she really went through a bad spell. She had a divorce, well no, a split from her fiance, which really got her sad. She then pulled out of her Broadway show once on this island because her doctor told her she needed to regroup herself because she was starting to, uh, pretty much wind down, and then it actually, her depression got so bad, she wound up in the hospital. So, uh, I feel really bad, she went through some really hard times in 2018, but luckily, things are looking up for her. Uh, another clue talked about her calling London home. Well, she used to be on London's Broadway version, I think it's called the East Side or West Side, whatever it is, she used to be uh, in Chicago, the musical Chicago, um, and she was there from like 2009 through 2011. She loved it so much, she actually almost bought a house there. Throughout a lot of her Clue videos, you see the butterfly incorporated a lot of religious stuff for those who don't know. She is extremely religious. She actually started off as a gospel singer, singing at her church, and then she was found and then became famous, and she still likes to sing in church service. I don't know if you know that. Um, then a couple other clues. One is that she has a butterfly tattoo. The biggest clue out of all of them is that, uh, I think it was episode three, she had mentioned that she didn't want to fall off and make a fool of herself again. And for those who don't know, back in 2004, she was with Beyonce and Kelly Rowland live on BET's 106 in Park, where she famously fell. And so, uh, I feel bad for her. It's funny if you watch it, but, um, you should Google it, it's quite funny. So do you agree with me? Do you think it's Michelle? Next on our list, we have the fox, and I think the fox is Wayne Brady. Here's a few clues to agree. It starts off with the fox reading a comic book to his little fox, and for those who don't know, he used to be a comic book actor, well I guess not actor, he used to play a villain called Micron in the animated TV series Batman Beyond, and he also has a daughter named Miley, so there he is reading a comic book to his daughter, Miley. Um, he says, I dabbled in many genres from Dougie to Doubtfire of Laugh With Them All. Well, Dougie is a reference to Dougie Hauser, MD, which is Neil Patrick Harris, and he has acted with him in Holly, I Met Your Mother, and he actually played his brother, which is really funny. Um, and then Doubtfire refers to Mrs. Doubtfire, AKA Robin Williams, which they actually been together on Whose Line Is It Anyway? So those clues match up right there. Next, we saw a drawing of him holding up an Emmy, and he's won multiple Emmys, including one for his own variety show, The Wayne Brady Show, and then Whose Line Is It Anyway? 
Uh, then he held up a set list with the songs, Everybody Say Yeah, Sugar Daddy, Cabaret, and You and Me. Well, those are some of the songs he sung, including some from Kinky Boots and some that he actually put out on his own. He went on to say that he mostly performs with a pack of fellows, which, whose line is it anyway? He actually tours with them and a couple other guys, but he's mostly known to be with that pack. And his last clue and big clue right there was his revealing clue, which is a boombox. For those who don't know, Brady was born in Columbus, Georgia, and his parents, well, his father was in the military and his mom couldn't take care of him. So he had moved all the way down to Orlando, Florida to be with his aunt and his grandmother, which is actually interesting because he does call his grandmother mother from time to time. And one of the gifts his father gave him while he was gone was a boombox. What is funny is that that got him into music. So kind of cool connection right there. So do you agree? Do you think it's Wayne Brady? Please comment below. Next is the Flamingo. And I feel bad because Adrian, I'm going to say your name wrong. I think it's Adrian Baylon. Here are some clues that I kind of think that matches up with her. We once again revealed all these people. If you want to see all the clues, you can go through our reveal videos on this YouTube channel. Actually, I'll put them in the description. So um, from the first video, we saw a couple books, one that said Spanish, another one that said Little Women. Well, she has a very big Hispanic Latino background and Little Women refers to the music group she was in, Three Little Women. And there's actually another story that's really funny about that later, but I'll get to it in another video. Uh, next, she talked about a zoo tube and beauty and fashion and life advice. Well, she has a YouTube channel where she talked about beauty, fashion, and life advice. Next, she kind of talked about being trapped in her career. Well, she was a part of the Cheetah Girls and then went to 3LW. And after that, she tried to do a solo career, but unfortunately, people kind of got her stuck and trapped in being with groups of girls. So it didn't really work out for her. I kind of feel bad for that. The next clue, she talked about how she went from hood rat to Hollywood triple threat and how a wizard plucked her off her stoop. And for those who don't know, back in 1999, she was performing, in, I think she was with her, her choir at Madison Square Garden where Ricky Martin came in looking for four backup singers and dancers and he picked her out. They toured on the Living La Vida Loca tour. Once she was done, she moved to Hollywood where she got involved with the Cheetah Girls and 3LW and she became famous. So uh, he uh, really helped her out. A really, really good guy. And then the last clue we had is that she wanted to be a doctor and actually attended medical school. Well, while she was here living in New York, she went to a special high school that was made for people who were kind of traveling the path into a medical college. So there you go right now. Do you agree? Do you think it's Adrian? Please comment below. Next is the leopard. A lot of you guys argue about this one. I think it is Seal. Uh, this is why. First he talked about being in The Masked Singer. The security is almost like the security at the White House. And for those who don't know, he sang for Mr. and Mrs. Obama back in 2011. Uh, he was actually really talented. He put on like a good like two hour long show too. Uh, next we saw a neon sign that said Jador on the Wall. Well, he sang a song called uh, Il Ador. And so, uh, yeah. Same thing right there. Uh, there were clocks on the wall with reference his song, Flying Like an Eagle. Uh, time keeps on slipping into the future. Yeah, okay. Uh, later on, he says, leopards can be fierce yet divine. Well, Love's Divine is one of his songs. We see a baby left on a doorstep with the address 1963. He said he wasn't born a winner and he wasn't always wanted. He was passed from pack to pack and he found that his talent was his escape. He was put up for adoption when he was born and moved from foster care to foster care until he was about four when his parents went ahead and took him back. But there was a lot of bad blood between his family and finally when he turned 15 and he was singing on his own, singing on the street, he finally moved away from them and kind of gave him his freedom. And one final clue, um, he had mentioned New York powers and then there was a megaphone with the Australian flag for those who don't know, he was a coach on the Australian's The Voice. Now, the only thing I do want to mention is the fact that he is speaking in a high-pitched voice, so when you listen to the pitch correct audio, it doesn't really sound like him because he's talking like this. And one more thing, for those who say RuPaul, <laughs> this, the leopard keeps on mentioning his cubs multiple times. RuPaul does not have kids, so not RuPaul. 
just want to put that out there. So many people kept on saying that. Uh, next, we have the Rottweiler, which I think is Chris Daughtry. Uh, let's go into the clues. He mentions a pigskin in Under the Friday Night Lights and then talked about a fantasy ring. Well, he had a fantasy ring on. And for those who don't know, he played football in high school until I think the age of 14 where he didn't really, he actually wound up being so bad that he actually went from football to theater. Um, and he now actually has championship rings, but for fantasy football, because he does very well every single year. I wish I did because I suck at it. Um, then there was an insert shot of Blue Roses. Well, for those who don't know, his daughter is named Rose. Kind of makes sense. He also has a Blue Rose tattoo on his right shoulder. He held up a little flag of the state of North Carolina. He's from North Carolina. Um, there was a couple other clues, including on how he used to clean houses before he became famous. Well, when he was performing in that band in high school through college, in order to make money so that they could perform in the side, he used to clean houses. I know, kind of crazy, right? He talked about how he became famous was very unconventional. Well, for those who don't know, he didn't win American Idol, nor did he get second place or third place. He got fourth place, and yet he still managed to get a music career out of that, a record deal, and, I mean, multi-platinum. Good for him, right? Now, do you agree that it is Chris Daltrey? I want to know. Please comment below. Next on our list is the thingamajig. And sorry, Victor, I'm going to screw up your name. Why am I looking up there? Sorry, Victor, I'm going to screw up your name. I, I don't mean it in any way. I just, it's so hard to say. Victor Aldapio or Victor Aladipo? Aladipo sounds better. We're going to go with that. Uh, the reason why I think it's him is because he says, don't call me Chewbacca, though we celebrate together. His birthday is May 4th, 1992, which for those who are Star Wars fans, you know, may the 4th be with you. May 4th. Yeah, I know. Uh, he makes a lot of references to doing magic while there's an American flag in the background. Magic refers to Orlando magic. Uh, we keep seeing a cupcake. Well, we saw a cupcake once with the number 4, which refers to his basketball number being the number 4. Um, he says, my darkest moment is when he went to rehab. He's referring to rehab as in physical rehab because back about a year ago, he had, I'm, I'm going to say this wrong, he had ruptured his quad tendon in his right knee, which took him out for the remaining of the season, which is funny. That's how we got him on the show. Um, then his last clue and the biggest one of all of them was the revealing clue, which was the American Sign Language book. He said, this taught me how to communicate with others. For those who don't know, his sister Kendra became deaf in second grade. And so in order to be able to talk with him, he had to learn the American Sign Language. So do you agree? Do you think it's Victor? Please comment below. And finally, the last one, the tree. And I think it's Anna Gastier. Now, let's go through the clues real quickly because I know a lot of you guys are going to be like, no, there's, there's no way. Um, she kept on talking about her delicious performance, which is a skit reference to SNL, where she had, I mean, this skit's really famous by now, Delicious Dish, where, I mean, I think the biggest fame, well, I think the biggest one was with her and Alec Baldwin, which she does talk about later on because she mentioned fruitcake, which is something that Alec Baldwin said. Um, she talked about only being loved during Christmas time. Well, most of her famous skits, including the Martha Stewart one, are all Christmas ones. We saw a storage locker with the number 30, which refers to 30 Rock. Um, she mentions the White House. Well, her father was in politics in Washington, D.C., so she actually was born and raised in Washington, D.C. And the biggest clue of all, which kind of was like a dead giveaway, was the Chicago flag and a playbill with three pennies. Well, for a while, she was in Chicago on their Broadway, uh, performing Wicked at the Three Penny Theater. So... There's my big clue right there. Now, those are all my clues. Do you agree with my guesses? Please comment below if you do or if you do not. Now, I am going to go ahead and play all the pitch correct audio. Pretty much what I did was I slowed it down and to, I slowed it down and then I pitched it down like a third or a fourth so that you can hear the real celebrity voice. It's not 100% accurate, especially with the leopard, as I said before, but here you go. Last performance, I let my guard down and sang from the heart. But let's be real, I'm used to my voice winning over the ladies. What's up, Nicole? After I put on a good show, I always like to break bread with the homies. And this is how we do it. Feel free to snoop into my life. You'd see that my pops taught me how to serenade the ladies, and I haven't stopped since. So, Nicole Majig, tonight this song's for you. And I ain't too proud to beg. Rehearsing for my last performance, there was an accident, and I suffered an electric shock that nearly knocked me out. All my insecurities about performing resurfaced. 
but I couldn't let that setback stand in my way. Becoming the butterfly has reignited a love I've had since I was seven years old. I found others modeled just like me and was welcomed into the choir's joyful noise. It made me feel safe, even in the hardest times. This bleeding love has given me the highest of highs. It sadly led to the lowest of lows. As the butterfly, I am taking charge and reclaiming what I thought I'd lost because this is what I was meant to do. Getting this far against so many great singers has been one of the most gratifying experiences I've ever had. But I will say, the hardest part of this whole funky thing is learning to stand on my own two purple stumps for the first time. And let me tell you, I work really well with others. So when I put on this mask, it was like I'd been beamed up into another dimension. Or I'm alone, like the new girl at school. Ooh, maybe I'll hang out with those strangers with candy. Tonight, it's all about showing the judges and myself that there are no more excuses. And that this tree can stand tall. After weeks of my nerves getting the best of me, I feel like things are starting to click. I'm so happy, I feel like I'm living in a fantasy. Welcome to my beautiful home I like to call my chateau. Where today, I'm soaking up all the incredible things the panel have said about me. I'm realizing this experience is teaching me to love my own voice for the first time in years. And adios mio, can I be straight up? I'm finally finding my center. And now, with my newfound confidence, tonight I'm throwing the biggest party this stage has ever seen. Being on this stage is the most fun I've had in as long as I can remember. But truth be told, I'm terrified of the panel finding out my true identity and judging me because of it. So I've been training every day to make sure I won't be unmasked anytime soon. Because here, I can finally be seen for just my voice and pure talent. Everything is zen. I want to win this more than anything I've ever wanted in my career. With this song, I'm ready to show the lengths I'll go to win that golden mask. The love I've received these past few weeks has let a whole new side of myself shine. I'm always dreaming about entertaining people on tour. In my 30-year career, I've accomplished many things in pursuit of this dream. I've won multiple awards and become a household name, but I'm mostly known for being part of a pack of talented fellas. Not my voice alone. So tonight, with this mask on, I'm gonna prove that I'm a superhero all by myself. Because this fox is one in a million. I never imagined how liberating this competition would be for me. Each time I step out onto this stage, I discover I can do things that were inconceivable without a mask. When I was a teenager, I set myself free for the first time. Since then, I've done my best to treat the world as my catwalk. Whether I'm in New York or Gay Paris, I always try to channel my inner glamazon and champion. I'm singing a song that celebrates the best of the past because I never want to forget that moment when I chose to just be me. Now, thank you for joining me. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe, hit the notification bell, and give this video a thumbs up. And I always like to leave you guys with a question at the end of the video, especially for those who actually make it to the end of the video, which it turns out only like 35% of you guys do. Um, but I want to know right now, Christmas is going to be a few weeks away. Um, do you guys ever have a white Christmas? I mean, we never do. New York never has snow on Christmas. But I want to thank you once again for joining me. I'm Joey, and I hope you have a great day. See you later.